So we have our front view, front three quarter, but some more challenging angles and positions for this one. I'm gonna do the same start. Here's my gestures. So we'll go through this one a little bit quicker. There's nothing here that, that there isn't, uh, we haven't covered or, or should be confusing. You can see the weight's higher on this left side. So I'm wrapping lines for that. Here's my rib cage head, of course. You can use some wrapping lines for that too. And weight, so this leg's pretty straight here. Gesture for that. Get my proportion. You can see in a view like that for the foot, you could use those same perspectives we talk about, but just foreshorten them a bit more. And then what I like about this other leg is look how it, it creates this big C curve uh, off that large stretch in the, the front of the body. So that's, I always look for these in the, the more passive parts of the body. Just finding those longer relational rhythms always looks nice to me. So here's uh, the arms crossing the body this way. Can I see that just the elbow peeking out on this side, back and up. I don't think I'm gonna do too much to change the pose in terms of the design. That would be the gesture for the hand. And then again, like thinking about that long rhythm we talked about for the front down to the leg, I use that. That's a great opportunity to do this arm too. Look how that would come up and then that cool, like the last moment, like that hand changes. This lesson is part of a course available on proco.com that I've put together. It goes through ideas of line, shape, how to use perspective, combine form, and then eventually apply that to figures. Figures we look at turnarounds, seated, foreshortening, hands, feet, and how to construct them. There's over five hours of lessons, drawing sessions, student critique, and the course is going to be released on February 8th. If you're at all interested, there's a link in the description. So check it out. That just becomes now one long S curve for that passive side. Now um, let's do our, our tilt. So this goes up, this goes against that, and then head and neck, continue that directional balance. If it helps, sometimes what I think about uh, is if I'm doing my gesture, you know, where the pit of the neck is, is always really useful to me. So let's say we have like this kind of same gesture over here, but let's keep it like a little simpler just for time. So that would be the basic management of the figure to the, the weight-bearing leg. So if you want to play around with the balance of your poses, I'll look for the, the pit of the neck. And then if you just plumb that straight down, if you find that that's near to the weight-bearing ankle, that means that you have a pretty stable pose. So like if I just drop this on the photograph, look how close it is to that medial malleolus or ankle. That's useful because if you don't want a balanced pose, then you could change it. Um, so I always, I'm just aware of that. And I, my kind of default is that I always push it more or less so that it doesn't, I don't really like a lot of balanced poses or overly balanced poses. So kind of pushing, you can see on this, that I over exaggerated to the point where I moved it off the ankle. That would be kind of more gestural related or information pertaining more to gesture, but you know, it's, it's something you might want to consider at this stage just for the quality, the type of pose that you're producing. Now I have my shapes are next. So pelvis is here, rib cage is here. Now I'm gonna do connections. I think we could see on this that there's a really cool, really clean looking S curve for the neck on that side. So that's wrapping behind the head, overlapping the rib cage. And then it's wrap here would be that slice where I want the back of the rib cage to look to be just slightly higher than the front. And on this side, it would be pinched. And all of this is to kind of impress the same point that my, my current view of, of poses and the way that I'm drawing, as far as what's presented here is analyzing, interpreting, adjusting, making changes, thinking about the design, um, and less right now about copying, reproducing, um, you know, looking carefully at tonal patterns and gradations I don't have a bias against either one. I think they're just different tools, but that feels better to me. Like, whereas before it kind of felt like the a little bit stiff in the neck. Now I'm gonna do the pinch and stretch here, the torso. So this, I could really see a nice uh, C curve as that rib cage pushes down on the, maybe the subcutaneous fat and the 
external oblique. So a T and then a wrap. Goes behind, goes in front. And that's what the muscle does too. Then on this side, here I could see my rigid surface for the rib cage. And then we'll sneak a little line in there. And then it kind of creates this, get that full form. And then we have our S and then pull into the pelvis. So here I'm just kind of playing around with the spacing. And then how this tucks back. So that'd be my kind of thinking about those gestural relationships between the core masses. Pelvis, rib cage, intersection. Next up is the symmetry line, landmarks. So pit of the neck. See if you can just find one line through. Pit of the neck, belly button, pelvis. So that makes a big C curve that's closer to the right side of the figure. So anytime that line favors one side or the other, it means there's a directional rotation or a dimensional turn towards that side. Here's a, this is a tip that I use a lot. So when you're doing that, anytime you see that, it means that it's a three quarter turn. Anytime there's a C curve relationship between pit of the neck to pelvis through belly button, that means that ultimately by the time you're done developing these, both your rib cage and pelvis will, will be boxes and you'll see some degree of a side plane and that they'll probably proportionally share the, the planes, the width of the front, the width of the, the side. Here's the trick that people always struggle uh, in my classes with twists. So twists wouldn't be a C curve, it would be an S curve because in one direction you have the, so the symmetry line of the rib cage is facing one direction and the S comes when the pelvis starts to go the opposite direction and that tugs that line into the S at the bottom. So that goes this way. So the, if we interpret a twist based off of that, what it means is You'd have a rib cage looking like this, and that would be facing this way. And then the pelvis would be facing the opposite way. So you'd have, instead of boxes that are sharing that proportion, you'd have this. So rib cage goes this way, pelvis goes that way. I think the easiest way to manage a twist is in the intersections. Best way to manage twists is to do two triangles that are asymmetrical. So on this side, you would have a, a triangle that's fatter at the bottom and then narrowing and overlapping to the top. And so that would show that this part of the oblique is coming across and forward on that pelvis, but the top where it connects on the side of the rib cage is still back there out of, out of view. The other side is gonna be triangles fat here because that muscle would be attaching all the way across the side plane. And then that tapers and narrows to the side of the pelvis it's turning away that we don't see. So you get one triangle, top heavy, other triangle, bottom heavy, and then in the middle, the plane that would be the abdomen normally, this would be, you know, you could think of this as, if it helps as an S. But the easiest way, to, I think, to reconcile the twist is just to think that that area, the midsection, is always a continuation of planes. So all you have to really figure out is, you know, where the planes are beginning and ending, and then you could just manage the like the more explicit planes to connect them. So that would be my kind of that's the S, and then how I would change the perspective so that the rib cage faces one way, the pelvis another, and then how to make it feel like it's maybe natural or organic at the areas of the midsection with those triangles and then that that winding S plane. So here's our C curve that we just back back up to what I was saying, that's a C curve that relates all my landmarks through the belly to the pelvis, sternum. You can see the 10th rib pretty well. So one thing that's important when you're doing these landmarks to get your boxes is always make sure that one of these landmarks is in the inside of the, of the egg, because that's what you're using as a point of reference to carve into it. And then maybe the as is point is here and here. And notice that I'm trying to keep those parallel to the tilt. So I don't contradict that. Now let's make a box from these. So a box will look like, let's just do a width and a, so, and a depth. Width, depth, height. 